Okay, so our next talk is Indoor Navigation by People with Visual Impairment Using a Digital Sign System, uh, given by Gordon Legg. First, thanks to James and Roberto for organizing our meeting today, and to friends and colleagues at Smith Kettlewell for hosting this great event. Um, my project uses location sensing as part of a system to assist visually impaired people with indoor wayfinding. And this project got off the ground quite a few years ago now as part of a joint project on spatial navigation with Mike May. So, if Mike's still here, I want to uh, acknowledge the, the initiation of this. We go to the next slide. So here are the members of our current research team. There's several of us from the University of Minnesota. Uh, in addition, some of you here may uh, know Paul Beckman, who's now at uh, University of St. Thomas, <coughs> and Bosco John, who's at uh, USC. And we're also collaborating with a biomedical engineering firm in the Twin Cities called Advanced uh, Medical Electronics. Next slide. So this slide lists three key components of indoor wayfinding technology. First, we have position sensing. The technology needs to determine the person's precise location in the building and also their facing direction. And secondly, we need uh, a digital map representation of the building in a data structure appropriate for useful navigation. This is not typically the case for most architectural uh, uh, data structures. So we've developed our own um, uh, software, which we call Building Navigator. And third, we need an accessible interface. We use computer speech to describe um, nearby points of interest and to uh, give uh, route finding information. We have the next slide. So here's an overview of our uh, digital sign system. The slide shows a person navigating through a building. Digital signs are posted at key locations in the building. Um, we're using data matrix tags, which is a kind of barcode. Um, the numerical value of the barcode uniquely identifies the location in the building, let's say a room or an intersection <coughs> or even a hazard. The person is holding um, a handheld tag reader, which is about the size of a flashlight. The tag reader uses an infrared camera to capture and interpret images of the digital tags. And it, it also has a, a phone keypad for input commands. The tag reader communicates with our building navigator software, which is running on a smart mobile device. The mobile device um, has computer speech output. So when a tag is identified, the software converts the information about the user's position and heading into useful speech messages about the local uh, layout geometry, or it can give route instructions as well. So I'm going to briefly describe uh, three modes of operation of this system, tell you briefly about three tests, corresponding tests of um, human performance. <coughs> so first I'll talk about tag browsing. Uh, we tested how effectively subjects can actually use the tag reader non-visually to find and read the tags. We're going to go to a little movie next, first little tag browsing movie. This little movie will show uh, one of our visually impaired uh, subjects, a subject with low vision. She's going to be walking down the corridor, aiming the tag reader at the wall on one side, and it will read off the tags as she goes walks down the corridor. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, there's audio.
So basically, it's just reading off the room numbers in this case. In the actual experiment, uh, subjects walked up and down through a long corridor in our building while trying to use the tag reader to identify room numbers on the wall. We actually tested three groups of subjects, 10 in each group. Um, there was a blind group, and they uh, used their cane or guide dog while doing the uh, testing. Um, we had a low vision group, and we had a blindfolded uh, uh, group of uh, sighted subjects. And all of these groups, all of the subjects in all of these groups could do the task quite easily. All the groups uh, were at 90% uh, hit rate or better and simply monitoring the signs as they walked up and down through the corridor. So the second mode of operation is what we call the explore mode. Um, and um, let's go to the next, just the next slide, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The slide will show here just a fragment of a map of the building. Do we have it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, you'll see a little map of the building. There's a red triangle here which lo shows the position of a pedestrian facing north in a long north-south corridor. And in this explore mode, the pedestrian uses buttons on the keypad to probe for information about information they can select information ahead on left, ahead on right, behind on left, or behind on the right. And for any given room, uh, there are three levels of information available, uh, and we can just demo those. There's the concise description, which is very brief. We have a little sound clip. Room guest 357, psychology department at nine steps. So it uses step as step count as a metric, although an alternative would be to use meters or feet. A slightly more verbose description adds more text information about that room. So that's the verbose description. Printer room resource center. Laser printing and scanning facilities are available here. And in a third possible form of information, it would be a hazard description. Let's listen to that. Tripping hazard. Gables all over floor. Okay, so you, you get the idea. In the experiment, we tested subjects by placing them at a location in the corridor, simply asked them to use the interface to find a target room uh, and to walk to it. And again, we have another little video clip here of the explore mode. In the clip here, our, uh, our model subject here is looking for room N29 on the interface. She finds it and then she walks to it. So that's the target room, now she'll start to walk. Passes other rooms. Finds the target room. Okay, so in our little experiment, each subject did four trials like that, with and without this tag reader. So even without the digital uh, signs and the tag reader, the talking digital map of the building uh, running as software on the mobile device. Uh, may be of substantial value to visually impaired users. So for example, if you can locate yourself by reading, let's say, a braille sign or a, a raised uh, tactile sign and feed that room number into the building navigator software, it can provide you with uh, information about local points of interest. Let's go to the next slide. So this slide just gives you some idea of what the data uh, in our experiment look like. We have bar plots here that show trial by trial times in seconds for subjects to reach the target rooms. There were four trials for uh, each subject. They did tasks uh, with and without the tag reader, and we have the three groups that I mentioned earlier. 
Um, you'll see, uh, those of you who can see, will notice a few yellow bars. Those are outliers in which subjects uh, either went the wrong way initially or overshot the room and had to backtrack. So it's, there are a few times that are long compared with the others. On the right side of the uh, figure are some block box plots that show summary information, medians, quartile ranges, and, and the like. Um, the key points here, though, are, uh, first of all, that all of the subjects in the three groups were successful in using this technology to find the target rooms. Um, I will note that the blindfolded group, these are sighted people blindfolded, they were quite a bit faster when they used the tag reader in addition to the building navigator software. So this may indicate that inexperienced or newly blind subjects would find the tag reader uh, uh, technology particularly useful. Okay, the third mode I'm going to illustrate is the routing mode, and the next slide is another little map fragment. Um, again, we have a subject located at the triangle you know, in a north-south corridor, but this time the person's task is to find a remote uh, uh, room on the, on the floor plan marked by the um, purple, purple star. And the software in this case generates a, a route based on waypoints, um, and there's a list of waypoints that the subject can access on the interface. We can just listen to a sample, waypoint one. We have a sound sample. Distance to destination is 84 feet using four waypoints. Waypoint one, east-west, 17 steps ahead. In this case, east-west represents an intersection or a corridor ahead. Uh, and we have another a little movie Again, our, uh, our model low vision subject is going to be following a very simple route around the corner. It'll only take a few seconds. So we'll look at this third movie. you get the idea. So we tested our subjects again in the route following functionality. Each subject did three routes, um, either with the aid of the tag reader and signs or simply with the digital talking map, map uh, software. Uh, each of the routes were about four or five waypoints, so they were substantial and, and uh, you know, somewhat tricky routes. And once again, our group groups of subjects were able to use this technology to follow the routes and successfully arrive at the target rooms. Um, in this route following tasks, the subjects actually uh, did not do much better with the tag reader. Basically, the tag reader told them that whether they were on route or off route, um, but as far as following the waypoints, the digital talking map was uh, almost good enough for most of the subjects. One general uh, finding from uh, both the explore and route finding experiments, our visually impaired subjects took substantially more time to complete the tasks than normally sighted controls who simply found the target rooms using the regular building signage and their normal vision. So we, we simply asked the question, why did the visually impaired uh, subjects uh, why were they slower in doing the tasks? At least part of the answers take is the time taken up in just listening to the interface commands, absorbing the verbal information, and following the instructions. Um, so in total, this the performance testing has demonstrated the feasibility of the system. There are some ergonomic problems to be dealt with here. Uh, Right now, the subject has to carry a special purpose uh, tag reader device. So we're now currently in the process of porting our software to an iPhone. What we haven't yet resolved is whether the uh, iPhone camera 
and its image processing are up to the real-time demands of this uh, particular application. To summarize then, first of all, the integrated system of position sensing, digital map, and speech interface uh, worked well during human performance testing. Even without the position sensing, the system is useful as a talking digital map of the building. Second, our visually impaired subjects uh, could independently use uh, this DSS technology to browse room numbers as they traverse the corridor, find a target uh, room in a corridor, and follow a room to a remote destination on the floor. Uh, in a building without tactile signage, all of these activities would normally require assistance from a sighted, uh, sighted person. And thirdly, our visually impaired subjects took longer to complete these tasks uh, than normally uh, sighted wayfinders, part of it being the overhead associated with consulting the interface. So thank you very much. So I'm not very familiar with the tagging system, and in your video, I saw the user doesn't need to face their sensor to the tag in order to know that. So I wonder what is the signal you use behind? Okay, so the, uh, the tag is just a, a barcode, a small barcode patch on the wall. Uh, the camera sends out an infrared uh, uh, illuminator, and uh, the, tag actually, the tags are actually retroreflective, so they stand out against the background, so they segment against the background, and then the infrared camera captures the image of the tag, and then uh, 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 computer vision is used to, to recognize the number on the tag. So does it mean that the user needs to put the sensor to the right direction in order to yeah. sense that? So the, 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 the user needs to have some idea of the directionality of the tags and has to find the tags non-visually with the uh, with the tag reader. Yeah. I see. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Christopher Tyler, uh, Smith Cuttlewell. Um, Gordon, I was you, I didn't apparently do this, but I was wondering how uh, efficient or inefficient people would be uh, just from Braille signage on each door, which is commonly available, how much longer would it take to, to navigate? Have any idea? Um, well, we actually have done some of that. It depends on the task, of course. If you're trying to monitor each room as you go up and down the hallway, I don't know how much longer. It would be quite a lot longer to stop at every room and find the sign and read it. And of course, the Braille signage by itself won't give you root information. So I think it depends exactly on the task uh, in question, you know, to really answer that question. There's so Something. much places to the subway stations where there's a make So uh, an interesting, an important part of building a good cognitive map is knowing something um, about the, the structure of the space, even within the rooms, as opposed to just the network. So I'm wondering, does, does the data structure of, of the underlying uh, database support spa like a spatial information level of the rooms in the description? So something like room X is 20 by 30 and there's a U-shaped table in the middle. Um, it, the, you know, the, the data structure is really based on architectural floor plan. So it, it has the, uh, uh, it's built from the, the corridor room lobby structure. As far as articles in the room, like tables or cables all over the floor, that, that would be included in the example I gave of the verbose description, which would be sort of handcrafted uh, text messages that would have to be uh, added um, to the database. We have time for one more question. Send you'll be right there. This is Sandy Rosen from San Francisco State University. 
And just a question, um, you're using number of steps as a, a measure of distance. Did you have a, did you find in your uh, testing the different step lengths that people often have based on height or sometimes the presence of adventitious visual impairment versus congenital, where they can range anywhere from one and a half times a foot size to three times? Yeah. Yeah, so, so we have one of the uh, parameters, one of the uh, parameters in the, in the software is step length. So we calibrate people uh, uh, before they do the testing and then we say, okay, try to use your normal step length. Actually, we, we did another completely separate study I didn't mention here about uh, variability in step length and the accuracy of distance based on step counting. It's very good. People are very... Uh, uh, you know, repeatable in their step length. Variability is low in both visually impaired and sighted people, as long as you uh, don't change your, your speed. If you walk at a, at a preferred speed, uh, step, step count is a pretty good metric for distance. Okay, let's thank Gordon.